So in the last video, I talked through how to simulate choice probabilities, which is how we are going to kind of encounter simulation in this course. And we will also talk through some of the kind of uh, details of how to operationalize that in the, the final video this week. But now let's talk about how we're going to use those simulated choice probabilities in a uh, simulation-based estimator and kind of how these simulation-based estimators differ from the, the more traditional estimators that we've already talked about. So, I mean, the, the, the basic way to think about simulation-based estimators is that they really are roughly equivalent to their traditional analogs, the, the you know, mixed, uh, sorry, uh, maximum likelihood or generalized method of moments. It's just that we want to replace the terms in, the, in those estimators that are difficult or impossible to calculate, and we're going to replace them with their simulated counterparts. So, the, the example that we just talked through in the last video and that we'll encounter in this class is that mixed logit choice probabilities include an integral and so they don't have a closed form expression and so we replace them with those simulated choice probabilities that we can actually calculate that i talked through in the last video one issue here though is that simulation can potentially introduce bias or noise into the estimation method and the estimation procedure, which we need to consider and, and, and at least understand when we're using these simulation-based estimators. And so let's talk through each of them. We're going to talk, talk about two of them here, uh, the, the simulation-based analog for maximum likelihood and then the simulation-based analog for generalized method of moments. So let's start with maximum likelihood. And, and the simulation-based analog here is a maximum simulated likelihood estimation which sometimes is referred to as simulated maximum likelihood estimation. Doesn't matter where you throw the term simulated in there, where, where either one implies the same thing. It's the, the basic idea is maximum likelihood, but we're having to simulate the likelihood value or simulate the whole estimation process instead of having to, uh, instead of being able to calculate it as directly as we did before. And so the maximum simulated likelihood estimator is gonna be the set of parameters that maximizes not the log likelihood function, but now we're gonna to have to think about a simulated log likelihood function. Mathematically, this looks exactly the same as we had when we were talking about maximum likelihood. We've just now put this check on the L to indicate that this is a simulated log likelihood value instead of the kind of actual one that we were dealing with in, in maximum likelihood. And we define this simulated log likelihood as being the log uh, of, of or, or the, the sum of the logs of a bunch of simulated density functions, right? So uh, there's something about our density functions that we cannot calculate that we need to simulate instead. Once we've simulated those densities, then we can just log and sum things up just like we did before. It's just that we're going to call this new object a simulated log likelihood instead of log likelihood because it's based on a simulated density function instead of an actual density function. But the basic, basic uh, you know, kind of basic process here is exactly the same as we want to find the set of parameters that maximizes that simulated log likelihood. And we're going to once again say that that's the set of parameters that makes it most likely to generate the choices that we actually observe. And so with, with our discrete applications, we, we talked about this a few weeks ago, the densities that we're using in our, in our uh, down here uh, that, and that we have to simulate are gonna be those choice probabilities. And so for a discrete choice model, like a mixed logit model, our simulated log likelihood function is gonna be this expression here that depends on simulated choice probabilities. This looks exactly like as it did a few weeks ago when we talked about maximum likelihood with a multinomial logit model. It's just that now we're plugging in these simulated choice probabilities from the mixed logit model. And what we get out of that is a simulated log likelihood value. And so, you know, once we kind of put all these pieces together, the maximum simulated likelihood estimator for a discrete choice model is going to be the set of parameters that maximizes this expression here that, you know, just to kind of highlight this importantly, depends on the simulated 
choice probabilities. And, and we'll, we'll get back around to this in the next video, actually, I think, but I do just want to point out, you know, if we wanted to take the first order condition here, we would find that this expression, the essentially what we're saying here is that the derivative of the log of the simulated choice probability for the alternative that is actually chosen the derivative of that thing with respect to every parameter equals zero. We talked about these first order conditions, you know, a few weeks ago when we talked about maximum likelihood, but here we're just kind of plugging all the math in, plugging the simulated choice probabilities in to show exactly what these first order conditions are. But to just say it again, when we're thinking about a discrete choice model where we've had to simulate choice probabilities like a mixed logit model, this expression here is ultimately going to tell us what our estimator is, which is going to be very similar to what we had a few weeks ago uh, with maximum likelihood. It's just that now we are plugging in simulated choice probabilities instead of kind of the actually calculated choice probabilities. So that was maximum likelihood. That was one of the two methods that we've talked about. The other method was generalized method of moments or, or just method of moments. And so there's a simulation analog here as well, which is called method of simulated moments or simulated method of moments, either way. Um, and so the method of simulated moments estimator is the set of parameters that solves, and I put solves in quotes here, I'll get to that in a second, but it's the set of parameters that solves some set of simulated moments. So once again, this should look almost exactly like what we had a few weeks ago when we talked about generalized method of moments. It's just that now there's gonna be some component of the moments that we cannot directly calculate and we're gonna to have to simulate. So we're gonna to refer to these things as being simulated moments instead of just moments. Um, and of course, these, these simulated sample moments are going to be the kind of simulated empirical analogs of some population moment conditions. So just to kind of say this the way we, we said it a few weeks ago, we have some, some moment conditions that we expect to hold in the population. But now let's suppose that there's something about those moment conditions that means we can't directly calculate them. Well, we can still write down the empirical analog of those, the, the kind of empirical sample-based analog of those, those population moments. And we acknowledge that we're not gonna be able to calculate the moments directly, but we can simulate them. We plug all that in and we get these kind of expressions here, which is gonna give us the, uh, the, the, the estimator. Of course, if we're in uh, the, the, the case where we have more moments than parameters, we can't actually solve this system. And that's why I put solves in quotes there. In that case, when we're doing generalized method of moments, we just want to minimize the weighted sum of, of squared uh, sample moments. Or here, we would want to minimize the weighted sum of squared simulated sample moments. But, but once again, there's kind of a direct analogy here between either method of moments, generalized method of moments, and method of simulated moments. It's just that we're using simulated moments in place of those kind of actual empirically calculated moments. So what does this look like with a discrete choice problem? Uh, once again, uh, just like with, uh, with with maximum simulated likelihood, we can kind of plug this into our specific uh, context here. And if we think back to when we talked about using GMM or method of moments with uh, discrete choice problems, we saw that we should have some, some population moment conditions that tell us that the, uh, our econometric residual should be orthogonal to a set of exogenous instruments. And once again, these instruments could be the actual data. If they're exogenous, it could be other, other data, other, other things. Uh, uh, in the textbook, Ken Train talks about uh, some other things that we could plug in as, as instruments here. But uh, whatever we're using, we have some exogenous instruments and those need to be orthogonal to our econometric residuals. So starting from this, uh, these population moments, the method of simulated moments estimator is going to be the set of, of parameters that solves the simulated sample moments that are analogous to these population moments. 
So we kind of replace the population expectation with a, a you know, kind of just a, a sample average, just like we did before. But if we're in a world where we're not actually going to be able to calculate these choice probabilities, then in our, our kind of empirical expression here, we just replace the uh, calculated choice probabilities with simulated choice probabilities. And then we can describe this, uh, this, this uh, estimator here as being our method of simulated moments estimator. And of course, if we have more uh, moments than parameters, we can't actually solve this thing, but instead we're gonna minimize the weighted sum of squared simulated sample moments instead of actually solving this. Um, so that was maybe being a little overly pedantic, but I did just want to point out that these things look very similar to their non-simulation based uh, analogs, the kind of traditional estimators that we've already talked about. We're just plugging in, in, in our case, simulated choice probabilities in the place of, of actual choice probabilities. Um, when, when working through these estimators. Of course, in different settings, you might have different objects that need to be simulated rather than, than choice probabilities, but, but the basic logic is the same. So those are the two kind of simulation-based estimation methods that we're gonna talk about. And now in the next video, we're gonna talk about the properties of those simulation-based estimators and how they differ from the traditional estimators that we're more used to.